July 5th, 2024, we've got a beautiful watery new moon in Cancer. This happens at 6.57 p.m. Eastern U.S. time, so calculate that for your own time zone. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the micro and the macro because more than most, this is one of those new moons that it's going to hit differently depending on kind of where you are, of course, where it's hitting your natal chart. But in terms of the United States, this one is a real doozy. I'm going to get into kind of the conjunctions and challenges to the U.S. natal chart later in the video, but I want to start off initially with kind of the more general energy and just talk about the Sabian symbol and the energies that we may see uh, at the time of this new moon. So uh, to start out, it's got a nice trine from Saturn in Pisces. Our last new moon, the Gemini new moon, was squared by Saturn in Pisces. And so whatever tension, whatever friction there was there at the time of the June 6th new moon in Gemini, we're getting kind of a, a little bit of a relief with that watery trine from Saturn in Pisces to the sun and moon in Cancer. So Cancer, of course, is ruled by the moon. So anytime we've got a new moon in Cancer, it's kind of like an extra monthly reset. Every new moon gives us a chance to kind of woo, reset. But with the energy of a Cancer new moon, that is strengthened. And so this one, it focuses on nourishment, but kind of a celebratory type of nourishment. The Sabian symbol for this one, again, we always round up. So it is uh, Cancer 15. In a sumptuous dining hall, guests relax after partaking of a huge banquet. So there's this energy, not just of the mother, which is very cancer, but kind of more like the Italian mother, right? The, the mother who gives this enormous feast. And so there's that energy opposite this uh, new moon in cancer is another mother energy, and that is Ceres, who is also associated with the harvest, with food, with grain. So we get this double mother energy, this double feast kind of energy. And then it's actually part of a yod, a uh, finger of God, that is involving the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius and Chiriclo at 16 Aquarius. So Chiriclo was the wife of Chiron. So Chiron, the wounded healer, the centaur, uh, the one who was very involved with that sun-moon Chiron eclipse on April 8th, his wife is Chiriclo, and she is also associated with healing, but more of like a magical, graceful kind of healing, whereas Chiron is more like the suffering kind of healing, the wounded healer. Chiriclo, she is associated sometimes with grief in the sense that she eventually became a widow, but primarily Chiriclo brings this kind of graceful, magical energy into the mix. And so we've got the great attractor, which is so strong that it actually swallows up galaxies, very powerful energy there at 14 Sagittarius. And then we've got at 16 Aquarius, Chiriclo, and that is pointing up here to this sun and moon conjunction of the new moon in Cancer. So uh, that is pretty powerful. Anytime you have a yod, whatever the point is opposite the apex, so in this case, that uh, series point is kind of like the release point. And so this energy of series is, is very strong at the time of this new moon. Uh, for those who don't know, Ceres is the same goddess as the Greek goddess Demeter, which a lot of people know about because of the rape of Persephone. So the same story is involved, and we've got Ceres in Capricorn, meaning at that winter time. So we do have a little of this grief energy as well. And in addition, we've got that kind of mama bear energy, right? So 
when uh, Proserpina or Persephone was kidnapped by Pluto Hades and taken into the underworld, initially Ceres was grieving. She had tremendous grief. The whole world turned into winter. And then she was able to rescue her daughter. Of course, anytime you have any interactions with Pluto, there is change. And so uh, Persephone, Proserpina emerges as a queen. So we've got another strong female archetype there. We've got the mother, we've got the queen, we've got the maiden who turns into the queen. So all of this is kind of playing out in the background of this new moon in Cancer. And there are a few other things going on at the time of the new moon. We've got uh, conjunctions with Bionor. Bionor is a centaur also associated with synchronicity. So, you know, those kind of odd serendipitous events that you're like, what are the odds? How could that have happened? This new moon very tightly conjuncts Bionor. And then if you remember from my last video on the Capricorn full moon, uh, at five degrees of Cancer, we had Clotho and Atropus, and those were two out of the three fate sisters. Uh, Clotho is the beginning, uh, the one who spins the thread of life, and then Atropus is the one who snips it, who cuts it. So we had both of those at five Cancer. Now they've moved up. They're not quite exact anymore, but they're quite close to this new moon. So again, we still are missing that middle sister, Lachesis. So we don't know how long stories are going to take to unfold, but we've got Bionor there with the synchronicities, with the signs, with the symbols, with uh, kind of this like higher orchestration of events. And then we've got two out of the three fate sisters there. So something big is brewing behind the scenes. Uh, then we've got kind of a malefic also conjunct this new moon in Cancer, and that is Apophis. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, Apophis is like the root of all evil, the sum of all evil in Egyptian mythology, a really dark figure to have there. But again, with that mama bear energy of Ceres and what gets kind of triggered by this new moon, we may see intense uh, like rising up of women, kind of that mother energy kicking in, that mama bear energy that's going to be amplified because this new moon also squares not only the nodal axis, which is right around 11 degrees of both Aries, the north node, and Libra, the south node, but right at that same Libra south node point is black moon Lilith. And so we've got this kind of outcast energy, this female energy where she needs her sovereignty, but black moon Lilith is also associated a lot of times with uh, abuse, especially sexual abuse or narcissistic abuse. And then again, with that kind of Persephone story being triggered, there is this kind of sense of enough is enough and, you know, something is, is coming into uh, a clearer picture where we're likely to have some kind of a shift. So that may be good news if you have been struggling with any of these issues in your own life. You're likely to, you know, maybe at the time of the new moon feel some tension with that square, but it's likely to usher in some relief. So some good news there. Uh, now, moving on to more of the geopolitical. I don't want to get really political here, but this hits so many things with the U.S. natal chart and with Donald Trump's natal chart at the time of this new moon that it, it just kind of feels like to not mention it is like really missing the elephant in the room. So um, on my blog, I have a much deeper dive where I'll, I'll link that below, um, where I get into like a lot of the nitty gritty things. But I want to just kind of give an overview so that people have some sense of just how pivotal of a time period we're in right now. So of course, anything that is happening on or around July 4th, we've got the sun conjuncting the U.S. natal sun. So the U.S. natal sun is at 13 cancer. This full moon is at 14 degrees, 23 minutes cancer. So 
pretty close there that's bringing up that energy but then there's some other stuff happening <laughs> so I'm gonna put up this chart and you will see just how crazy things are there's so many things happening that it's hard to keep them all straight uh, the chart got very crowded <laughs> so um, but just to, to go over some of the things that are being highlighted. So um, I pulled this chart for Washington, D.C. You can see that the ascendant-descendant axis is at 22 degrees of Sagittarius uh, for the ascendant, 22 degrees of Gemini for the descendant. This is a really loaded spot at that 22 degrees Gemini because uh, Jupiter on October 9th will station retrograde at 21 degrees of Gemini. That's the U.S. natal Mars. 22 degrees Gemini is Donald Trump's natal sun, uh, Donald Trump's north node, 20 degrees of Gemini, and his Uranus is at 17 Gemini. So that's a loaded point right there, highlighted at the time of this new moon in Cancer. But then at the top of the Washington DC chart, you can see that that Black Moon Lilith conjunct South Node that I mentioned is right at the midheaven. So uh, it's not just an energy that happens to be kind of causing some friction with this new moon. It's energy that's like up and, and so uh, Lilith was an outcast. We may see more energy about the border and uh, any kind of sexual abuse or trafficking, anything that's happening around there, it's going to be up. It's going to be more visible at this time than it usually is. Then we look at transiting Jupiter. So I talked about Jupiter is going to move up to that U.S. natal Mars point on October 9th. But at the time of this new moon, Jupiter is right on top of the U.S. natal Uranus. So Jupiter is at 9 degrees Gemini right now. And uh, the U.S. natal Uranus is at 8 Gemini. So if you remember back on April 20th, we had that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that was for everybody, and that was in Taurus. But now we've got that same energy being triggered in the U.S. natal chart with Jupiter crossing right over that Uranus point. So Jupiter expands everything that he touches. So we're talking energies that are, uh, you know, kind of rabble rousing, very revolutionary, I'm going to knock this over, get this out of my way, whatever is restrictive, that energy is up. And that energy is always kind of up anyway, at the time of the 4th of July, because, you know, we're celebrating American Independence Day. But this year, it's likely to be a lot more that way. Also, transiting Mars is at 19 degrees of Taurus. That is where the uh, Mars-Uranus North Node conjunction occurred in late July, early August of 2022. So thinking back to uh, things that occurred around that time, we're getting kind of a review of that with Mars there. But that 19 Taurus point is also the U.S. natal Vesta, which is, you know, the keeper of the flame. So think like the Statue of Liberty, you know, the, the flame that's up there or the Vestal Virgins that were tending that flame. So in a natal chart, Vesta is kind of that which we hold most dear. And Mars, of course, is... A planet of action and willpower, but also a planet of war. And so, you know, on a day after, right, July 4th, but July 5th is the new moon, on the day after uh, the 4th of July, where we're celebrating the Revolutionary War and the uh, American, you know, war for independence, we've got this kind of Uranian energy with Jupiter conjunct natal Uranus in the US chart and Mars conjuncting Vesta. But it gets even more intense for the US because if we look at uh, around five to seven degrees of Leo, we've got the US natal north node there, uh, six or seven degrees of Leo, depending on, you know, if you're doing mean or true north node. But we've got that and transiting Vesta is crossing over that same point. And that's also where transiting Mercury is right now. So people are going to be talking about these original principles, like what people hold most 
dear. This is not being political. This is just up. Like, this is the energy in the sky right now. We also have transiting Venus activating the U.S. natal part of fortune and the U.S. natal Mercury right around 22, 24, 26 degrees of Cancer. And so transiting Venus, you know, we think of Venus as this lovely energy, this beautiful, graceful energy, especially in Cancer. But Venus is also associated with values. And so when we're looking at kind of like the values of a country because their their points are getting pinged, Venus often does show up by transit before some kind of major... Um, Oh, it's like a, a reset of values or, a, hey, enough is enough here. We're not doing this anymore. Like that, that kind of energy can come from a Venus transit, even though there is love. It's like love of country, love of family, love of home. Uh, in Cancer, there's this very protective energy. So that's happening all at once. And uh, in, in light of this kind of Beanor uh, serendipitous kind of energy, this uh, Clotho and Atropos, uh, you know, two out of the three fate sisters energy in connection with that mama bear energy of like, enough is enough. I am getting my daughter. I'm taking her out of the underworld. And then we have that Apophis energy or Apophis energy from Egyptian mythology, where it's like, there's this dark evil, there's this, you know, really bad corruption stuff. But on some level, that protective mother energy, that cancer energy seems likely to win. So also, I've been mentioning Therius and a lot of my new moon and full moon posts, especially in my blog. Uh, I've been talking about Therius for years because there's been this kind of curious thing where this figure, which is kind of like lurking in the background, that's the energy of Therius keeps aspecting new and full moons, either squaring them, conjuncting them. There, there's just been this kind of persistent Therius energy for a long time now. And so I've been wondering about that. And now with this new moon in Cancer, Therius doesn't exactly aspect the new moon in Cancer, but it is opposite Saturn in Pisces at the time of this new moon, and also very nicely trine Mars in Taurus. So Therius is still there. And I just found it interesting after the debate, the presidential debate, that people started talking about, you know, who might replace Biden like Stalin was there ready to replace Lenin. And that is the exact analogy that Zane Stein has used in the past when talking about Therius is this like lurking then pouncing this kind of energy of someone who's waiting in the wings. So it'll be interesting to see what shows up with that that was presented as like a big shocker. But if you've been kind of following the energies of the sky, you realize that Dane Rudyard actually was correct. <laughs> Astrology is a language. And if we understand that language the sky speaks to us right so it's just something to keep in mind we're kind of tracking all of these things but the energies of this new moon in cancer are likely to be quite lovely i would encourage you to have your feast whatever that means for you whether that's a personal nurturing extremely a uh, cocooning kind of day to recharge or whether it's like the Sabian symbol where you're having a sumptuous feast and people are engaged and enjoying your food. Cancer just reminds us of what's important to us and uh, what we want to nurture and protect. But uh, yeah, as I said, so much going on with the U.S. natal chart right now, especially with this new moon that it just feels like, oh, you got to mention that. And it it can give you kind of a heads up. So maybe you're not quite so surprised at some of the twists and turns that uh, get thrown in the mix. Maybe maybe a lot of things have been working behind the scenes with that Beanor and that synchronicity. And, uh, you know, overall, it's a very positive Sabian symbol. I'm encouraged by that. 
You guys take care and we'll see what happens. All right, peace. Thank you.